Good morning. This is Pastor Rhonda Moore from Stewartsville United Methodist Church in Stewartsville, Indiana. Before I begin, I'd like to read to you the scripture for this morning. It comes from 1 Peter 1, 3-9. Hear the word of the Lord. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept for you in heaven, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you've not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The next scripture comes from John twenty nineteen through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked, for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the title of my message is Inheritance. And before I begin, let's go to the Lord for just a moment of prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, there are times when I read the scripture and the words just seem to kind of leap off the page. And I kind of tilt my head and I wonder, why didn't I see this before? And that's the way it was for me when I read the scripture from Peter today. I mean, how many times have I read that particular piece of scripture? And even when I read it over at the beginning of the week, it didn't speak to me. 
like it spoke to me when I went to write the sermon. And so I decided I would head into a different direction with my sermon than what I had originally thought. Through the years, I've had different family members pass away. My paternal grandfather passed away before I was born. My maternal grandfather passed away when I was in high school. Both my grandmothers and various aunts and uncles have passed away, as well as my mother and father-in-law. But the one thing that was consistent is that they left an inheritance of some kind to those that they left behind. In our scripture from 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9 this morning, Peter talks about our inheritance, our spiritual inheritance. And I wonder, how many of us ever stop to think about the inheritance that we have of a spiritual kind on a spiritual level? Because I think what frequently happens is that we go to church, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday, but then we have a tendency to kind of put it all in the back of our mind and go on with life, and we forget that part of what Jesus did for you and me was to give us an inheritance. When my sister and I were going through my father's things and sorting them out after he passed away, we found it really hard. We found it hard to separate and part with different items because of the memories that were attached to them. Despite our grief, the memories were mostly happy ones as we sorted through things, and we'd laugh or cry or both as we went through all of these things. And what stands out to me is that we were, re we were reminded that no matter what the things were that we sorted through, the fact is that these are only material things. What was really most important was what Dad had imparted to us on a spiritual level. And the question might be, what have you imparted? What have you imparted to your family or your loved ones? What's the legacy that you are leaving behind? I hear of so many families who they argue and they fight. They even sue each other over inheritances. People hold grudges. And after their parents die, they never talk to their siblings again. And I think, how sad is that? In our scripture today from John, Jesus tells us to forgive, to forgive each other's sins. After all, J Jesus died so that our sins would be forgiven, right? And what Jesus Christ did for us when he died and was resurrected on the third day was to give us a new life. He gave us a new life, new hope, and an inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade, Peter says. Now think about that. No inheritance that any of us have or will ever receive even comes close to that. Everything my sister and I sorted through after our father passed away will eventually crumble and it will be nothing <coughs> because the money will be used and all gone at that point. But our Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, has an inheritance that's kept in heaven for you and for me, one that will never perish, spoil, or fade. And I like that. I like knowing that there's something for me, that not only will my earthly father and all my relatives who are in Christ will be waiting for me, but I have a place to go to. John 14, 2 and 3 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. How comforting. How comforting are these words. What a promise he's made to you and to me. He says, I have a place for you. I have an inheritance that I'm keeping in heaven 
for you. Sometimes it's hard to stay here on earth, you know, when our loved ones have gone on. And Paul was no stranger to death or persecution, e either one. And in Philippians 1 and 23, he talked about being pressed, hard pressed, as to what was better. Whether it was better to go to heaven and be with the Lord or to stay here and to serve the Lord, despite all the things, all the persecution that he went through. But I want you to notice what Peter tells us today, that those who are in Christ are shielded. Those who are in Christ are shielded by what? By God's power. We're shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time shielded by God's power, saved from sin, kept from sin as we walk in the light and we are saved from the fall because we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We're redeemed. We have eternal life. And yeah, our physical bodies are going to perish and fade away because our bodies are corruptible, but our eternal bodies will be uncorruptible. They're not going to ever perish or fade away. So what's the inheritance that you are giving your family? Money and things are nice, but what kind of spiritual inheritance are you leaving for your children and your grandchildren to follow in? When my sister and I were sorting out dad's things, I remember thinking about some of those things that had happened throughout the years. And I remember being angry. I was angry at my sister about some of these things in particular. And as we started, as we started to sort through things, I heard very loud and clearly the voice of the Lord saying, let it go. Let it go. Forgive her. Let it go. Don't hold any grudges against her. And so I did. And what did I get in return? I got peace. Peace. Total and complete peace. And I learned to let love take the place of all the things that I'd held against her. Peace. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, Isaiah 26, 3 says. And Dad used to quote it to us quite often. Coincidence? I don't think so. Peter tells us today that we might have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials, and that's not exactly my favorite verse. I mean, who wants to suffer trials? I don't. But when he says we might have to suffer trials, I think the thing that we have to realize is that God is always there. His shield is around us. We're shielded by the power of God. The only problem is that we forget. We forget that God is there. He is walking with us. And he's going through all these trials, these bumps in life, all the things that gets thrown at us in, in the course of living. One of the legacies that my dad gave to my sister and I is prayer. He was known as a prayer warrior, and he totally covered us with prayer. His gifting was just that, a prayer warrior. And there are many times when I'm sure that I would have been in an automobile accident, for instance, but the prayers of my father covered me, protected me, and kept me safe. There's something about being in tune with the Spirit of God, the way Dad was, that makes you aware of the things that you need to pray for. And many are the times when Dad would call because the Spirit told him to call. 
And what did I do? I just burst into tears. Oh, and I would cry and I would tell him all of this stuff. And then I became a parent. And it's not until I became a parent that I understood the prayers of my earthly father. And I began to understand the absolute necessity of covering my family with prayer. I understand when the Spirit tells me to pray and pray now. Because later on, I'm going to find out why. And I'm going to be really glad I did. And I understand why we can rejoice as Christians. I understand why sometimes we go through all these trials and grief. And I understand how that these are the things that build us up in our faith. Because either we have the faith that God can take care of us and God will take care of us, or we don't. Either God can or he can't. There isn't any halfway. And that's what Peter is talking about when he says, Our faith is refined with fire so that we can praise and glorify and honor God as Jesus Christ is revealed in and through our lives, regardless of what happens. And I understand the joy, the joy that comes from having faith and keeping the faith and the salvation that comes with having faith because of Jesus Christ. And the question is, what kind of inheritance are you leaving behind? Is it an inheritance of faith? Or is it an empty life that's vain and hopeless? No hope of eternal life in heaven with Jesus. John tells us today in verse 31, but these things are written. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And we need to remember the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But why did he come? Why did Jesus come? I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, John 10.10 10 says. The things of this world are going to crumble. They're going to perish. But the word of God will live forever. It's not ever going to go out of style. It's not ever going to lose its truth, its veracity. And the more you study it, the more you're going to understand. And so the question remains, what's the legacy? What's the legacy? What's the inheritance that you are leaving behind? Is it one that's based on the truth of God? Will your children and grandchildren see you in the mansions that's been prepared for us? In the words of Joshua twenty four fifteen, Choose you this day. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, he says. And it's your choice. It's your choice to follow him or to not. To believe or not to believe. It's your choice as to the legacy that you leave for your children. And whether or not you'll ever see them again in that happy home and place in the mansion that he's prepared for you and me. Oh, Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit upon us today. Oh, Lord, it's, it's just too easy. It's too easy, Lord, to give up and to just throw our hands in the air and say, forget it, I can't do this. But Lord, you never said we had to do it. You said to give everything to you. Everything to you. Because too often we worry, we fret about everyone who's sick, the people that we love and that we know who desperately need you, and we forget that you're there all the time and that you have a shield of power that surrounds us, that you give us to those who believe in you. And we forget you've given us the power to command evil to leave. We forget to use your gift. Father, forgive us. 
Father, forgive us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every illness and infirmity to leave every one of our loved ones and ourselves. In the name of Jesus, be gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking those stripes on the cross so that my illness, my infirmity, the illnesses and infirmity of those that I love and that we love have already been taken and we are cured in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I command in the name of Jesus every part of our bodies to work on earth as it would in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I ask you to continue to protect us, to guide us throughout this week and keep us on the path to the everlasting place that you have for us, those mansions in paradise, and for the glorious future that is ours through you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Folks, I hope that this sermon has blessed you and that you have a wonderful week in the Lord and with the Lord, knowing that he walks right with us, right with you, right with us every step of the way. Amen.